let's move on. Let's talk about Vicario now because it's been a clear, seemed to me like a clear plan, especially last stage of the Man City game, the Ake goal, especially the first half of that Everton game. Every corner seemed like it was a bloody penalty, the way they were uh, smothering Vicario and literally just clearly targeting him. Do you think he's getting exposed at the moment, James? Um, it's a really tough one. That I, I think there's, I think there's a mixture. I think I agree with what Anne says about that. The referees are told to leave it all and let VAR pick it back up at the end and pick up the pieces. I think there's a bit of that. Um, I think obviously I would imagine the tactics were seeing what happened at Man City, so then they've, they've targeted that exact area. So there's a mixture of that as well. Then I think he should be protected a little bit better by his own players. Maybe your Van der Ven's and your Romero's getting in there, seeing the problem and being alert to yeah. him going, hang on a minute, this, this just keeps happening. How do we protect him? And being stronger himself. I actually think it's an amalgamation of, of, of all of it, to be honest with you. It's not just one thing. One thing I do believe, we were talking about this the other day, the, the good thing about it is I do think it's quite an easy fix, though. I think it's in, in terms of, OK, let's hit this in training until he's got this. Like, he's an incredible player. And I think yeah. that seeing this now highlighted, I'd imagine they're training on this right now, knowing that we're, that Brighton are going to do the same rough tactic. Um, they'll have ways to stop that. Uh, who, who is the set piece coach for us? Know, is, it, is it Mason? I know the attacking one is Mason. I'm not sure about oh. defensive. I don't know. But the, yeah, I, I think it's an amalgamation of all, all those things. And But I, but the good news oh, is, yeah. I, I believe, it's quite a, a quick fix uh, now it's been highlighted. But yeah, being protected by Van der Ven and Romero, they're, they're beasts. So that would be, and even Dragerson, he's an absolute beast, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think it's too too much m moving around to get that to get that stopped. And I think we sh the only thing that bothers me is why didn't we look at that straight after Man City? I mean, you've, you've seen that. They've gone for that tactic. It's huge that we should be working on that. That's the problem for me, rather than the problem being for the rest of the season. It will be fixed, but why wait? Why not get yeah. on that? Yeah. I guess one thing is that you're you're literally coming up against the best set piece team and the most physical side in the league in Everton, and it was always going to be difficult, um, you know, defending set pieces against them. But I just don't understand it. When did this rule change? When the when the keepers don't get the benefits of the doubt from these situations? When was it okay to just keep backing into goalkeepers, keep backing into goalkeepers until they fall down? I just don't understand it. And they mean neither. It seems to be the same. We were saying, we were watching down the pub, we were saying that same. And why are we not taking advantage of that up the other end? Mm. So why are we not talking about that and going, hang on a minute, it's happening to us. Let's get on, in on that. Yeah. I mean, Bickford's got tiny little arms, can't even touch a crossbar, can he? So <laughs> like, why are we not getting involved in that? Um, little T Rex arms. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, what, what's your take? Do you think that Vicario's getting a bit exposed at the moment? Should he be more protected by the defence? It's a hard one because. I don't know too much about zonal marking in terms of how you set up in that structure and set pieces. And I know like what to do versus man marking. Man marking, you just, you'd push him off, wouldn't you? Get, I mean, stick a man on like a Harrison to avoid him from sticking his butt, <laughs> twerking into, um, into the <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So. It's it's a hard one. Like I, I definitely think they're doing zonal marking at the moment, and I think that's why no one's picked them up. But then it's down to the communication of the Cario and the communication of Romero being the captain of the centre backs or that back line. So between the two of them, one of them needs to be a leader. One of them needs to step up because it's not like it happened once and then they scored. No. There were warnings. I was watching the game. I think raw. Yeah. One off the it. line as well, wasn't there? Yeah, I'm like, you got, you got to do something. Like, someone on the sidelines, I don't know, the coaching staff, have a word, someone, because they're doing it again, they're doing it again. And, and Dash, he looked like he was getting a hard on from it. Because he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? But them and there, they weren't really reacting to it. And so, it had, like, the commentary, I was watching it, the commentary were like, yep, yeah, um, they're on Vicario. He's not doing nothing about it, blah, blah, blah. And, it, yeah, the inevitable happened. Do you know what I'm saying? And I was very disappointed that no one said, look, Harrison's clearly backing into Vicario. We need an extra man here. Even though we're zoning, we might need to tweak. Like, you pick this man up because, like, you know, it's it's, it's going to be detrimental and we're going to end up conceding. And it did happen. So I just want to see a little mixture of, yeah, do your zonal thing. And I understand why you do zonal because you're trying to leave 
less gaps you know man marking you get pulled out of position and then all of a sudden it's a free header do you know what i'm saying but there's there's advantages and disadvantages to, to zonal versus man marking people can get the run on you in zonal but i feel like really we hadn't conceded a lot of goals from corners that's the wickedest thing so it's it's a hard one it's a hard one but yeah i do agree man i think something does need to change and they do need to work on that and they need to have a word but it just needs Vicario, I felt against the City one, he needed to be stronger. And then there were certain times I'm like, he's not being strong enough. He needs to just, even if he put, because they're not going to give a penalty. I don't think they'll give a penalty if he pushes through a player and he, he punches and gets to it first. Do you know what I'm saying? If they're not going to give a free kick, they're not going to give a penalty either. So mm. they just, just go all out and, and be that guy that we know you are, Venom. Like, be that guy in it and just grab that ball, win it back. Mm. Mm. Sim, what do you feel? Do you feel like Vicario needs to be a bit stronger? Do you feel like he needs to get protected more from his defence or is it just a mixture of both? Yeah, I think there are two ways of looking at it. I think one way is if you don't want to commit a player just to protect Vicario and get in between Vicario and 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 the player and stop uh, the player back into Vicario, then it's absolutely on Vicario to be stronger and make sure that he's not getting bullied. He's pushing off, uh, he's pushing the player off him, and he's allowed to maneuver inside the box, and able to come and claim uh, crosses. Which, to be fair, it did feel like in the second half he he did seem to rectify that because he did come and claim a few uh, a few corners in that second half so maybe there was a change in tactic there which is is definitely beneficial definitely what is happening at the moment is um the players are are seeing that at the moment that if they just um, stand their ground and slightly back in without making any movement too obvious that if the referees let it go var is not going to get involved and we are definitely um coming we're not actually the only team that has um been on, on the end of this. I think Allison's been on the end of, of one, a few. Um, there was that, uh, that Burnley keeper as well, James Trafford, who was on the end of one where maybe he could have given a foul, but the referee decided not to give it. So there's definitely a trend at the moment where referees are letting more go when it comes to challenges on the goalkeeper. Or what I say challenges, players are being a lot cuter with their movement. They're making sure to not make any obvious movement to kind of um, make the referee aware they're making a foul. What they're just doing is standing in front of the keeper, just stand, being strong standing their ground and once the cross comes in just slightly backing in and that was all that's ne- that's all that's needed when a goalkeeper is going to jump and claim and claim a cross all you need is a slight nudge and it can knock him off balance and it can make it very very difficult to come and claim the ball so there's there's either Vicario has to be way stronger, has to make sure that before that cross comes in, he's pushing the player away from him to give him that space to, um, you know, do what he needs to do, whether it be a punch or, or claiming a cross. Or we do need to commit a player and we need we need one player to step up and get in between the opposition player and Vicario, making sure that he's not touching Vicario and he's not getting close to him and he's not putting Vicario off and making sure he can't come and um, be strong from these corners. So we have to make a choice what we need to do. Um, it's prob- I, I think it would be better if Vicario can deal with it himself, just so it means that player that's then <coughs> marking um, Vicario gets uh, the play- that player could be freed up to mark someone else, and maybe uh, would the- that means there's not going to be another free man in the box if we are committing a player to Vicario. But if Vicario is not able to do it, which would be um, a shame, it would wouldn't be a good thing. Then it means someone we do need a player to come and commit himself to making sure Vicario is helped in that situation. I see Brentford um, from their set pieces; they do do that. They commit a player to making sure Flecken is um, not being bullied by an opposition player. No one's getting near him, and once you see it, once a player is getting near to Flecken, they barge him away. They they push him away and make sure that they're not allowing it. Basically, and maybe that's what we need to do um, when it comes to this Vicario situation. What we definitely know is this situation can't continue we know that we can't allow players to continue to back into Vicario and that status quo to kind of continue where he's being we're allowing him to be bullied and we're it's costing us goals and important goals as well and it means you know if a team get a corner in the 90th minute and we know and they know that this is something we're struggling with they're just going to try and exploit it and it's definitely something that's going to add to anxiety within our defence and with the fans as well. Once we, We're just going to be shitting ourselves whenever we can see the corner. So this definitely can't continue. And it's definitely something that's being highlighted and being exposed at the moment. But hopefully this can be rectified now that it's clear as day it's a problem. This can't be 
hope this can't now not be dealt with, surely, mm. because it's been an issue for the past few weeks now. Yeah, as James said, I'm sure they've been working on this in training ever since that Everton game. They should have been working on it from the Man City game, to be fair. But that first half of Everton, I mean, should have sent alarm bells ringing. Uh, but look, like you said, it does seem like they did sort something out for the second half because they were nowhere near as dangerous from corners in the second half as they were for the first half. And Vicario was coming and claiming a lot 